On October 7, 2010, I left for the pilgrimage of a lifetime. I've served, served the homeless in Kansas City. I've smuggled Bibles into the underground churches of China. And I witnessed the poverty of Mexico firsthand. But I wasn't prepared for Haiti. Upon my arrival, I saw Haiti's need. Beggars requested to carry my bags for me, or just plain carry them off. Sewage and trash covered the streets. There were homes cracked and broken along the, along the streets. And tent cities sprawled the hills. It was the most unusual and rather heartbreaking thing I have ever seen. Thousands of people were just trying to survive. Our group rode a small bus to an orphanage near Port-au-Prince. At the entrance, I saw the smile, just smiles of children as they came from their dorms to greet us. When the doors of the bus burst open, we heard the sounds of singing and trash can drums being played by little hands. It was pure joy. I stepped off the bus and immediately had kids grab my hands and yank me toward them. They were fighting for my attention and hugs. It was a homecoming to a place I'd never really known. These kids were happy, full of love and warmth. The next three days explained their joy. They had enough food, they had an education and love from a small group of nanny types called mamas. They also had a secure place to sleep and even a nurse. Above all, they drank clean water, Delo, as they call it in Haiti. The orphanage as well was the eighth installment by a clean water crew of whom I would become a part of later on. The same could be said for the other orphanages I would visit that week. The differences weren't obvious at first. I realized basic needs were being met for survival at the first orphanage. However, here, they weren't being met at all. The final straw for me was, came during a visit to an orphanage called Julie's. I watched as my friend held a baby girl named Deborah. The baby's arms and legs didn't move. She was about the size of my daughter Lena when Lena was born, but Deborah was about eight months old. Was it lack of medical attention for her mother when pregnant? Not enough food? Was it the shortage of clean water? As sad as it was, Deborah could be this way anywhere in the world where resources are slim or not accessible. I saw firsthand women and young girls walking down the dusty roads of Haiti, dragging cans and tubs and buckets and large bowls of water from who knows where back to their tents for domestic use. They spent most of their days and time doing this. I held baby Kimberly, the result of a young girl of 12 who was raped while going to draw water. I saw men standing ankle deep in sewage just bathing away. They even had soap, but they rinsed off with the only water source they could find, the local runoff ditch. No wonder there was a cholera outbreak in Haiti only two weeks after I got home. Haiti, to me, is a microcosm of what's going on all over the world. Poverty, loss, lack, disparity, and no clean water or sanitation. To hear that a child was raped as she walked along the road to find water was enough for me. I knew I wanted to do something. I hope by sharing my story, you will help me in my efforts to supply clean water to those in need. My name is Marie Schofield, and this is my story. <laughs>